I have to keep slapping this around to uncenter it so I can show you guys how to center over and over again. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we're going to talk about centering and some of the more common mistakes that I see the majority of beginners make when they're trying to center. Now before you watch this video, we've already made a video on wedging your clay and preparing it for this next step that we're going to be doing right here. If you haven't seen that yet, I highly suggest you go watch it, I'll link it down below for you. You might not like wedging your clay, but wedging your clay makes this process a whole lot easier. Now, if you're a true beginner, you might not know that there's different types of clay. For example, this right here is bee mixed with no grog in it. This right here was a bowl that my friend gave me, which was brown clay with a little bit of grog in it. And this right here is a ball of porcelain. Although these two look the same, they are different types of clay. And this is drastically different from these other two types of clay. Um, Dante, you said grog and I have no idea what that is. Most clay that is not porcelain or pure clay has grog in it. For example, this clay body most likely had grog in it because most red, brown, and other colored clays that are not these white or porcelain clays over here have grog inside of them. Grog is basically the potter's way of saying there's little tiny rocks in the clay body that not only help the clay stick together, but they help the constitution of the clay. And every different type of clay that you might see in stores usually vary in grog considering they're not no grog or porcelain clay bodies. The reason I'm telling you this is because clay with grog in it has a better chance of sticking together and is a lot more controllable on the wheel, especially if you're learning to use clay. If you're a true beginner, I don't suggest you get no grog clay, and I certainly don't suggest that you get porcelain clay. These two clay bodies take a little bit of experience and a little bit more respect on the wheel to their different clay bodies. But clay with grog in it is a tiny bit rougher, and you can handle it a little bit more without it breaking apart. So if you're a true beginner, I highly suggest you get something with a little bit of grog in it. It might just help you out. Porcelain and no grog clay take a little bit of a finer hand and a little bit more experience on the wheel to actually handle properly. Keep in mind, I have seen people throw with porcelain day one and do just fine, but they most likely would have done a little bit better and their projects wouldn't have flopped if they had a little bit of grog or some constitution in their clay body. That being said, before we actually start centering on the wheel, let's center this ball of clay right here and go over some of the more common mistakes that I see beginners make that might be preventing you from centering on the wheel. Centering is actually extremely easy, and once you get some of the more common mistakes that a lot of beginners seem to make, you'll find that centering will become second nature to you after a while. The first and most obvious mistake that I see most beginners make is that they're not right on the wheel. You see my wheel? See how it's curved in like this so that I have space to put my legs? That's because the people who made this wheel understand that as I'm centering, I'm most likely right up on the wheel. In fact, my legs are touching my wheel head and the bottom holster of my wheel right here. Far too often do I see this. Too many times have I gone into a class where people are not directly on their wheel and they're centering way out here. And of course, because they're centering way out here, their elbows are not braced against their knees. And because of that, when they start trying to center, their hands move everywhere, just like this, because they're not braced up against anything. Why would they be? Because they can't brace up against anything because they're not directly in a space that allows them to brace. Their elbows are too far out. Most of your stabilization that you're going to need to center your clay correctly is going to come from your elbows stabilizing against your legs as they're up against the wheel. But that's not really going to happen in this position. All you're really going to get is wobbly arms, especially if you're not very strong, and you're just going to come back here, straightened elbows, and you're not going to get any real centering done that way. You're really just going to buck your hands around. And then your clay ends up looking like this. But if you are centering correctly, you're right up against the wheel, your elbows are braced on your legs, and because of that, the distance in between your elbows, your forearms, and the clay gives you a lot more power, a lot more stability when you're right up against that wheel. But if your stretched out arms are way back here, you lose all that space. Your muscles have to stabilize this entire clay body because they're going all the way up your arm, all the way to your shoulders instead of bracing where your elbows are. So when you're centering, I need you to be directly up against that wheel with your forearms or elbows directly on your legs because you are going to have to brace against them. The second mistake kind of goes back to the first mistake, but a little bit more is added on. 
on. Yes, my body is directly up against a wheel. Yes, my elbows and forearms are directly on my thighs for stability, so this way I really only have to move my hands. I don't have to move my arms or my elbows in order to try and stabilize, which wastes a lot of energy and muscle if you're not stabilizing against your legs, honestly. Even though I'm directly against the wheel head and my elbows are stabilized right on my legs, I see a lot of people still come back here. For some strange reason, they don't want to be leaned over their wheel head. I see far too many beginners try and center upright while still being stabilized against their legs and knees while still being completely straight back instead of bending at the waist and leaning over your wheel head just like this. This is the position that you should be in for stability. You should have your legs up against your wheel, maybe a towel for protection of water like you should have in the first place. You should have your elbows and your forearms directly on your knees for stability, and you shouldn't have your back directly straight upwards in a vertical angle. You should have it a little bit bent directly over your wheel head, specifically so that you can push your clay down without any extra effort, just like this. If I was way back here, however, I would still have to travel that distance while not being over my wheel head. I would have to pull one of these. My elbows flare out a little bit, I'm using a little bit more back muscle. You want to make this process as easy as possible for your body. It's completely okay to lean over your wheel head, just like this, while you're centering. It honestly makes the process a lot easier to be real with you. And the third mistake that not only beginners do, I still see some intermediate people do this too, is they put a little bit too much water on their clay body. You see, while I'm throwing, I'm just gonna dip my hand into my water source right here, and both of my hands benefit from that little bit of water. I can very easily center off of that alone. Far too often do I see someone throwing or crafting, and I see them grab their sponge, dip the entire thing in water, and just douse their entire piece in a bunch of water, just like this. That was a highly unnecessary amount of water, and using too much water will only make your piece a little bit more soggy and tired the more you work with it. A lot of people seem to forget that clay is technically just really expensive dirt with chemicals added into it to make sure that it fires at a certain temperature. But those chemicals are still dry powder inside of an earth clay or a clay body, and that means that water, much like water on dirt, will make it more and more soggy over time the more water you add to it. No lie, I have seen somebody grab their entire cleanup sponge and just douse their entire piece in water. I just wanted to show you, I didn't really mean to do it, but I guess I did it anyway. Far too often do I go into a class and see someone dousing their piece in water over and over again because they think the more water, the better, and the better, the easier it'd be to center. Not only is that much water extremely unnecessary and a waste of water, but at some point you're gonna make a breakthrough as a beginner. You're gonna start opening up and pulling your walls and making a nice cylinder or a nice bowl. But by that stage, if you use way too much water, you're gonna end up having a floppy piece. It's not gonna come off the wheel very well and it's not gonna form very straight or well either. And that's gonna be the main reason why, is because you used way too much water. Now that we've gone over the most common mistakes that I usually see beginners do that's stopping them from centering, let's go over the way I learned how to center. You guys remember when I told you to wedge your clay and put it into a nice ball? Well, this is where it actually comes in, unless you didn't watch the previous episode, in which case, get good. Having already wedged this clay and made it into a nice ball is gonna make it way easier for you to center right now. Let's start by slamming our clay directly into the middle of the wheel head. If you see my wheel head, there's a bunch of lines right here, and the closer the lines are to the center, the more centered your ball of clay is going to be. Try and aim directly for the smallest circle on the wheel. I see lots of potters slam it from really high like this, and I also see lots of potters just do this and simply put it on the wheel like this. If you're wondering why we slam it from so high, the point of that is to make sure that it sticks. You see, partly the point of centering is to make sure the very bottom of this clay, the part that you're most likely not going to be touching when you're centering, make sure that it sticks or it adheres to the bottom of your wheel head. Slamming your clay down directly in the center helps do that, and the harder you do that, the easier it is for it to stick. Although if you do this too hard or you don't do it hard enough, it'll either annoy your classmates or not stick at all. So I have a nice potter tip for you. When you first start out, go ahead and slam your clay right in the center of your wheel. Just to make sure this sticks really well, go ahead and take your finger and put it on the very outside of your clay body right at the bottom of the wheel head. This is gonna make kind of a little seal just to make sure that your clay sticks nice and well. Well, now that I need to take it off, now it's super stuck to the wheel, there it goes. If you slam this down on the wheel and it ended up somewhere not exactly in the center, you have one of two options. You can either peel it off and try again, or 
if it's kind of centered but not exactly super centered, you can always just kind of pound it straight into the middle. The clay will eventually move to the middle. You see, now it's nice, stuck, and mostly centered. Don't worry if you didn't get it exactly centered on the wheel. This isn't the point where you need it to really be centered. You're just trying to get it as close as possible to the middle or the center of the wheel to make your job when you're centering a little bit easier for later on. After you've gotten your clay nice and centered, go ahead and get just a little bit of water, put it right on your piece, and get both of your hands right on your clay. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your pinkies go all the way to the bottom of your clay body. You're gonna have the blades of your palms and your pinkies scraping right up against the wheel right here, at the very bottom of your clay body. Don't worry, if you have enough water, this isn't gonna hurt you. I know some people think it does, but it really doesn't. Come here and just squeeze in with your pinkies while making sure that you're nice and braced against your elbows and your knees, and make sure that your hands are nice and stable. You see, I squeezed my pinkies in, and now I have this kind of mushroom shape right here. The way I get rid of this is by applying pressure with my palms. But we're gonna keep the previous step active while we're doing the next step. I'm just gonna get a tiny bit more water, put my pinkies right back in the position they were in, and squeeze my palms in while I keep my pinkies in that position. And now I'm blocking off these two ways in which clay can escape. Just like I said before, now that I have control over where the clay goes, I'm just gonna put a lot of pressure on it, and of course, it's gonna start to move upwards. And I'm just gonna move upwards with the clay, moving my pinkies and my hands upwards as well. Of course, because I blocked the bottom off with my pinkies and I blocked the middle off with my palms, it's gonna move upwards because it has nowhere else to go and I'm putting very even, consistent pressure right here. But now, my clay has gone upwards and my goal is to bring it downwards into a nice centered dome. If you've made it this far, you've pretty much done about two-thirds of the centering process. Now, you just have to block off this pathway to the clay and push downwards with consistent pressure as well. When I was a beginner, I would always get stuck at this place right here because I simply thought pushing against the clay body on the bottoms of my pinkies and holding this and then pushing on the sides with my palms was enough to be centered. But the one piece of the puzzle that I was missing is blocking off the way to the very top of the clay. So we're just gonna keep the last two steps with my pinkies down here. We're gonna put my palms in right here and we're just gonna put our thumbs together all the way at the top of the clay. And we're just gonna push downwards in this direction. You can most likely see the clay start to bend this way. When I'm at this stage, all I have to do is press my palms and keep constant pressure, put my thumbs all the way on the top of the clay and just push down like I was kind of pushing down a joystick and just keep doing this until my pinkies or the blades of my palm reach all the way down here and keep that form. And sooner or later, after pushing in kind of a diagonal direction, it'll automatically center by itself. Let's watch it in slow motion so we can go over the steps one more time. Putting my thumbs together and putting them over the top of this clay body and pushing downwards in a diagonal direction just like this still works even with super messed up clay like this. I'm even leaving my hands open so you guys can see that I really don't even need my fingers for this. I just have to make sure that I have constant pressure with my palms and my pinkies and after that all I have to do is put my thumbs right over the very top of my clay and just press down in that direction. If you pay attention you can actually see the clay kind of move in that direction as I'm pushing it, so you can really see the direction in which I'm pushing. And when it really comes down to it, centering basically comes down to these three simple steps. Number one, make sure that your pinkies are all the way at the bottom and your palms are putting in consistent pressure. Number two, make sure that you're braced and you're leaned over your wheel just like this. This helps put consistent pressure on your clay body. If your hands are moving around just like this, you're not doing a very good job. And this is not consistent hand pressure. You need to make sure that your hands are not moving very much. 
And number three, after you're nice and stable, your pinkies are down and your palms are in, nice and stabilized, all you really have to do is put your thumbs together and push them down in this direction along with the clay body. And sooner or later, as long as you keep leaning forward, it'll kind of center for you automatically. Potter tip that everybody needs to hear. It does not matter how good you are at centering. If you do not release your clay slowly after you've centered, you will mess up your clay and it will become uncentered. Let me show you. I can center all day long. I can cone up and down all I want. I can center perfectly. But if I let go way too fast from the clay body, it's going to become uncentered. No matter how much I center and recenter, if I let go super fast, or if I panic and think I'm gonna mess up and do this, it's going to mess up on purpose. This is something that I see all too often, even in intermediate people. After you're done centering, go ahead and hold this position for just a second and slowly release your clay. This will make sure that it's nice and centered. If you panic though and release way too fast from that big amount of pressure that you've been putting on it, it's going to become uncentered. This is a very basic lesson that the clay is just starting to teach you in your ceramic art journey. You need to take your time, have consistent pressure, and keep going. But if you panic just because you're afraid of messing up and let go too quickly, you'll mess up your clay. Although if you take your time and don't hesitate, just be sure of yourself. Everything will come out just fine. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. I know this was kind of a long video, but I'm trying to go over the most mistakes that I see a lot of beginners make because I feel like a lot of people know how to center, but there's one thing really holding them back. And those are some of the most common things that I see people being held back that are just learning how to deal with clay. It's really easy to get discouraged if you never get a hold of those mistakes or those symptoms to not centering correctly. But thank you guys again for joining me today. I really hope this helped you guys. If you'd like to see any of my actual artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful potter eyes to see. We have a wonderful Facebook community full of tons of potters that'll give you some wonderful advice. And we have a new Discord community as well. All those links are down below for you. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you dirty potters next week. Yeah, 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 yeah